On our last video, we talked about using correlational studies to test data when you cannot control things. In this video, we're going to focus on controlled experiments. And this is what scientists want to do all the time. The only time you would do something like a correlational study, like observational research, archival research, or surveys, is when you can't actually create a controlled experiment, like the smoking and cancer example that we talked about, or like the aggression in watch TV, because you can't intentionally cause harm. There's also times when you can't, you can't actually control things. But when you can control, when it's possible to exert ultimate experimental control over things, then it's preferable to do it for this reason. In a control experiment, only the independent variable is going to be changing. The other things will stay the same, and we call those things constants. And when you do this, you can tell for sure that it was the independent variable that made a dependent variable change because you controlled everything else. So everything stayed the same. One thing changes, and that makes something happen. So you can say that's why it changed. That happened because of that changed. You know. So the same thing is measured across several groups, and that have different levels of the independent variable. That same thing that's measured, we call the dependent variable. All right, so these are the basic things. Remember, you thought you control everything except one variable and then measure the same thing across all groups which are experiencing different levels of the independent variable. All right, and this, these groups also include a group that is not manipulated, it's left by itself for comparison's sake. We call that a control group. Now, based on what happens between the groups that get treated and the groups that do not get treated, or in other words, the experimental and the control group, then you can say, ah, this is what independent variable is doing to the dependent variable. This it results in what we call empirical data. Data where you can conclude, unlike the correlational data, you could only say A is related to B in empirical data, data from experiments, you can say that A causes B. And that's why it's, uh, scientists want to establish control experiments to make sure that there's that relationship exists between the two variables. Because you see, in cause and effect, in order for you to do that, to you say that the independent variable is the cause that causes an effect, an outcome on the dependent variable, you have to make sure that all the other variables which could be affecting that outcome do not change. Confounding variables. And this is where we talked about in the last video, the, the correlational study fails because it can't control for that. Even when you do things like partial correlations and multivariate correlations, you're only mathematically trying to assess the effect of confounding variables. You're not actually sure of it because you didn't control it. But when you have a true experiment with a control group where you don't do anything, and then an independent variable is where you change things, and you're holding everything else constant, and you're measuring the same thing across all groups, then you can tell for sure that it was what you did that made a difference. A great example to see this that, you know, most kids tend to understand is playing video games. Now, let's say I want to tell you um, if playing Call of Duty or playing Mario is more fun. Now, if I was doing a correlational study, all I could do is you survey two groups of people who played two different, the two different kinds of games and ask them their satisfaction to see how much fun they have. But obviously, that would be only a correlational study because you're not controlling anything. If you're doing a true experiment, you will sort, randomly sort people into two groups. One group that plays no video games, uh, that's going to be maybe your control group. And then another group that plays Call of Duty or another group that plays Mario. So now you're changing the type of the game. So remember, when you're trying to establish what you're doing, the best way to do this is to follow a specific guideline. You're going to have to identify your variables. It's the, it's the five basic parts of the experiment. Here we go. The independent variable, the dependent variable, the constants, the control group, and the experimental group. All right? So to find to make this experiment work, well, you have to go in a certain order. All right, you're gonna uh, to construct an experiment. Let's go to the f first three steps of the scientific method first. Let's find the problem statement. So I want to know what kind of video game is more fun to play. So I want to transfer that into a problem statement. So I'm gonna ask myself, what am I measuring here to answer this question? What am I measuring? Remember, this is how you do it. It's the procedure. Well. If I'm going to have to answer this question, what, what video game is more fun, I'm going to have to measure the fun, right? So that means that that's going to be my dependent variable, the satisfaction that I feel after playing the game. My independent variable is going to be what I'm changing. What is it that I'm manipulating here? What is it that I'm doing in this question? The effect of what? 
playing video games on satisfaction. But that's not just playing video games, it's the type of video game that we're talking about here. So let's establish the, the, the problem statement then. The effect of video game type on, play, on gamer satisfaction. Great. We have a problem statement. Now I go back and do my research, my observation. I, I research different types of video games that exist. I research uh, other factors that could probably affect the satisfaction. And you see several of these factors here on the screen. Uh, how comfortable the seating is when they're playing. Uh, are they being encouraged when they're playing? What kind of video game system are they using? What kind of TV? What kind of sound system? What kind of controller? All the other factors that could probably affect the satisfaction, which are not the game. So what I'm doing here is I'm identifying all the parts of the experiment, right? And I research about it. I talk about what could possibly uh, make the fun of the video game uh, matter. What's the relationship that exists? I do all that background that we discussed before. And then I want to try to set up my hypothesis. And after my research, I think that playing uh, Call of Duty is more fun. So I'm going to say if the gamer plays first-person shooter games then he will have more fun than playing adventure games. And since these are the two that I'm comparing, that's good. You know, I, I have a good hypothesis. All right, so now I am ready to set up my experiment. I did the first three steps scientific method, and now the next thing that I need to do is, once you've raised the question, you understand the question, and you formulated the hypothesis, all you got to do is find your five basic parts of the experiment. So what is the independent variable here, right? What is being changed? Well, we already talked about this. Is the type of video game that's being played because that's one of the first blank of the problem statement and in the hypothesis we said that we we're going to be changing that. The dependent variable is what's going to be measured. In this case, it's going to be the satisfaction of the, of the gamer. Now, we talked about constants, things which need to be to stay the same. So this is the third part of experiments, independent variable, dependent variable, and constants. We already talked about all of them. Now I'm going to talk about control group. Some sort of group that's not going to receive treatment. What's the treatment? The type of video game that's being played. So it's not going to receive treatment, so they're going to leave it by itself. So that means that they're not going to play video games. They're just going to sit there, and that's going to be used for comparison's sake to make sure that the video games are actually making a difference in how much fun the person is having. And then you have the experimental groups, which are the different levels of the, 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 the variable. And this is going to be the group that plays Mario or the group that plays uh, Call of Duty as rep to represent the adventure uh, platforming game versus the first player shooter game. Now once I have that, now I have to establish uh, uh, how I'm going to be changing the independent variable. So in this case, I'm going to be forcing people to, to play the game. I'm going to randomly sort into two different groups and the people in one group are going to be playing Call of Duty for a certain amount of time and then people are also going to be playing Mario for the same amount of time. Then you also have to establish how you're going to measure the dependent variable. In this case, the satisfaction of the student uh, or the, the gamer's feeling. So I maybe create some sort of survey, uh, psychologically approved survey that's already been used in research and it's valid. It's, it's been shown as a valid measurement. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give them that survey after they play the game, and the survey will measure their level of satisfaction. Now also have to create a procedure to keep everything else constant so to make sure that things don't change so okay so I'll tell them that they'll be playing the same some of the same TV on the sitting on the same couch they'll have the same level of encouragement they will have this play on the same uh, video gaming system they will have the same sound system the same kind of controller they will play for the same amount of time everything will be the same except for the type of game that they're playing then I can also throw in their uh, safety procedures or things that I have to do for safety. You know, don't sit too close for the TV. And it's also good to, to put in there uh, steps taken to maximize validity or reliability of the experiment. In this case, I could say that I, I would measure uh, several times. You know, so I would do the same experiment three times with three different groups of people and get the averages rather than just get uh, one measurement time. And I could also make sure that the... The, the video games that I choose have been uh, approved as, as the, the specific kind of, as that there's no murky grounds. It is a platforming game. It is a fluid producer game, so it's reliable, it's valid. And I can also make sure that the survey that I'm using to measure the dependent variable has been already tested to be valid before uh, and all of that. So you see it's important to include that. So that's how you construct a good experiment, all right? Now, once you have all of that written down, you basically summarize it in a step-by-step -step procedure, and you're done. You have your experiment.
So that's how you write a good experiment. Why did I go through this process? Why did I make sure I did each one of those things? Why to make sure that, did I, that I went through the scientific method? Why did I make sure that I identified the independent variable, the dependent variable, all the constants, all what that I had a control group, that I had an experimental group, right? Why did I make sure that the procedures uh, talked about how I'm going to control things, how I'm going to uh, change the experimental group, how I'm going to change the independent variable, how I'm going to measure the dependent variable, how I'm going to keep other things constant, safety protocols, uh, steps to increase validity and reliability of the study. Why did I make sure that all of this was there? Because if I want to have a true experiment where, where only one thing can change, only one thing can change. So let me give you the example that we were talking about here. If I put a group playing Mario on an OTV, sitting on a stool that's made of wood with no sound, people around them saying, oh, you suck, playing on an old Atari-like system with a controller that barely works. And then I compare that to a group that's playing on a flat screen, uh, 3D digital projection screen, uh, and then all the people encourage them around them. They're playing with a state-of-the-art PS3 uh, with a surround sound system and sitting in a very comfortable chair. And then I ask you, which game was more fun, Mario or Call of Duty? Is this a fair comparison? Well, of course not. You can never say that Call of Duty was more fun because the game is more fun, because everything else could be the, the, at fault here. Because you change too much. If you want to make a true comparison, only one thing can change. Everything else has to be the same, and only that can change. Otherwise, you can't be sure that what caused the change was what you did. That's why it's important to find your independent variable, your dependent variable, your constants, your control group, and your experimental group. Because you need to know what you're changing and what you're measuring. You need to know how other things that need to stay the same so that you can make sure that a relationship exists. And you need a control group. And by the way, the control group is not the group that doesn't change. Okay? Even people who are just sitting there not playing the video game could potentially have fun somehow staring at the wall. Who knows? It's not the group that doesn't change. It's the group that is not specifically treated. You're not, you're not going to introduce the treatment to this group. All right? But this is important. You've got to have that group because you've got to make sure that the fun that people are experiencing is because of the game, not because of something else. If you just have them play Call of Duty and they say, yeah, they have a lot of fun, well, then you're not really comparing it to anything. How can you make sure that they wouldn't have said that they had a lot of fun anyways? Uh, another example of this, let's say, for example, I want to find out if um, adding lights to a fish tank makes uh, the plants grow faster, changing the lights to better lights. So I just leave them the lights there and, as, and then the plants grow. It's like, oh, yay, it works. No, you don't know if it works because if you don't have another fish tank where the lights are not there, and then you can't compare, you can't tell for sure that the lights was what made the difference. Because if the one without the lights had grown just the same, then you would not be able to say the lights made a difference. That's why control group is very important because you have to make sure that it was the independent variable that made something happen. That's why you keep everything constant and you compare it with groups that are not treated. So that you make sure the independent variable is what did it and not something else. The control group is to make sure the independent variable is doing something and the cause is to make sure that nothing else is doing what you think the independent variable is doing. All right? And that's why you have all those five basic parts of the experiment. The independent variable, the dependent variable, the control constants, the control group, and the experimental groups. And when you're writing an experiment, you make sure you went through the first three steps of the scientific method first. You've asked the question, put in a problem statement, you research the problem statement of the independent variable, the dependent variable, the constants, the relationship that exists between them, the levels of the independent variable, uh, all of that stuff. Then you, you talk about the uh, hypothesis, you set it up, then you explain on your, how you're going to change the independent variable, how you're going to change the dependent variable, how you're going to keep things constant, what's going to be your control group, what's going to be your experimental group, talk about safety, talk about increasing validity and reliability, and you have a good experiment. On the next video, we're also going to be talking about a little bit more about how to improve experimental design by making sure that you increase validity and reliability. All right, I'll see you guys then.